Probability is a numerical measure of the likelihood that a specific event will occur. There are two primary properties of probability. The first is that the probability of an event lies on 0 and 1. That's inclusive of 0 and 1, though probabilities of 0 and 1 tend to be rare in the real world. The second property is that the sum of all probabilities of all mutually exclusive events in the sample space of an experiment is 1. All possible events that could occur in the sample space are said to be collectively exhaustive. There are three views of probability. The first is classical probability, where we have a more absolute notion of the universe of events, and we can calculate the number of ways to get our desired outcome. Here we know all the events in the sample space, and we know how to count the number of ways that our event of interest can occur. If we can describe event A with classical probability, then the probability of event A is the number of ways that for A to occur divided by the total number of outcomes that could possibly occur. For example, let's think about the probability of winning the lottery, when the lottery ticket requires us to pick six numbers from zero to nine. That is, let's define the event of interest as choosing the correct lottery number. We'll discuss in detail a little later on, but as it turns out, there are 10 to the six, or one million different ways to pick a lottery ticket. So the total number of outcomes that could occur is one million. If the lottery picks six numbers zero to nine at random, there's only one way to pick that winning lottery ticket. That is, there's only one way for event A to occur. The probability of A is then one out of one million. The classical view of probability is what we need to find the probability of winning the lottery, because we know exactly how many ways that winning the lottery can occur, and we know how many possibilities there are in picking a lottery ticket. For another example of classical probability, let's consider a state license plate number that is randomly assigned with six digits, letter, 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 and then number, number, number. Assume that all possible three-letter combinations or three-number combinations could appear on the license plate, though there are probably some inappropriate words or number combos that probably wouldn't make it onto a plate, but let's not worry about that. Say we define event A as spelling hat on our license plate. How many total license plates are possible? With 26 letters in the alphabet and 10 digits, the number of ways to get letter, 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 and then number, number, number is 26 times 26 times 26, times 10 times 10 times 10, or 17,576,000. How many ways are there for the event spelling hat to occur? Naturally, the three letters have to spell H-A-T. Then there are three numbers remaining. One possibility is the plate hat 175. Another is hat 549. In total, there are 10 times 10 times 10, or 1,000 possibilities to spell hat on our license plate because there are 1,000 possibilities to arrange the three numbers that follow it. The probability of event A is 1,000 divided by 17,576,000, or 1 out of 17,576. Again, we know the number of ways for our particular event A to occur, and we know the total possible events that can occur. Event A is described with the classical view of probability. The second view of probability is relative frequency. With the relative frequency view of probability, we describe events by using past history to extrapolate about the occurrence of future events. We don't know exactly how to calculate the numerator or denominator of the probability calculation. We only have past experience. Experiments are performed to generate data, then the frequency of a desired outcome is used to calculate the probability of that desired event happening again. When event A is best described with the relative frequency view, the probability of event A is calculated as the number of ways A has occurred in the past divided by the total number of outcomes that we've witnessed in the past. Let's say we define an event A as choosing a defective part at random from a batch. We can't explicitly calculate the numerator and denominator to find the probability of a defective part, so we can't use a classical probability here. We look back at historic data, find how many parts have been examined, and how many of those parts examined were defective. If 874 parts were tested and 13 of them were defective, the probability of event A choosing a defective part at random is 13 out of 874, or roughly 0.015. The third view of probability is subjective probability, where a probability is assigned to an event based on some combination of subjective judgment, experience, information, and belief. Here the calculation of probability frequently involves experiments that cannot be repeated and don't have a finite and known set of outcomes. 
One example of subjective probability involves sports gambling, where some prior history is used, but also some information about players, venues, and weather conditions, among others, is accounted for when the likelihood of a team winning is calculated. Another example is when a risk analyst tries to model the likelihood of a terrorist event. Terrorist events in the U.S. are rare, and not much historical data describing the occurrence of these events exists. So intelligence gathering, near misses, and gut feel may go into calculating the probability that a terrorist event occurs. In this unit, we'll talk about situations described with classical probability. Then, in subsequent units, when we discuss random variables and their distributions, other views of probability will come up. One last definition to cover here is marginal probability. A marginal probability is simply the probability of a single event without any consideration of another event. The notation for a marginal probability of event A is P of A, or the probability of A. All the probabilities discussed in this video were marginal probabilities. If we perform an experiment, the outcome of two flips of a coin, and if we define event B as observing one or more tails, then the probability of B is a marginal probability a single event without any consideration of other events.